I want to talk about or discuss in scripture. Write, write this down. Four stages, four stages of disloyalty. The four stages of disloyalty. What are they? Number one, I think I need a PowerPoint one day. I got to start doing PowerPoints. The self will stage is the number one stage of disloyalty. The second stage is the offended stage. Number three, the third stage is called the passive stage. And number four is the criticism stage. Those are the four stages of disloyalty. And I'm going to take us through the scriptures to explain what these four stages are. All right? So let's open it with 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. So let's pause right there. So in discussing these four stages of disloyalty, disloyalty, our job is to examine ourselves. That's what every man and every woman must and should do. Does this apply to me? Could it eventually apply to me? I did a class some time ago called, uh, what was it called with Judas? Uh, everyone has the potential to become a Judas Iscariot. If the wrong button, button, button is pushed, everyone has the potential to becoming a Judas. So that's going to segue into today's class about the four stages of disloyalty. So the first thing I want us all to do is examine ourselves as the class is going on. So I want to discuss the first stage, the self-willed stage. The self-willed stage is a sign of disloyalty. It's not to be confused with a brother or sister that takes initiative. For example, uh, we were discussing uh, the forefather Phineas in the book of Numbers, where he saw a man and a woman, uh, it was a Simeonite brother, having uh, interracial relations with a woman that was, I believe she was Moab and Midian, I can't remember. But, and it was a plague in Israel. He saw it, he got a javelin, and he drove the javelin through the, the man and the woman. And God said, for that, I'm going to stay the plague and bless Phineas. He took initiative. He didn't wait to be told. So that's different than a self-willed brother or sister. So I'm not talking about taking initiative. Uh, the one that takes initiative sees a problem or a need, and not being told to do something about it, he or she will fix it. That's taking initiative. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, the self-willed brother or sister is the one that's told to do something and does something completely different than what you told he or she to do. He or she believes that they are better or smarter than you. I want to make another comparison of what I'm not, I'm not talking about a brother or sister who, who has a particular skill in something. For example, uh, you, in Atlanta, you have sisters who are trained in dealing with special ed, or you know what I mean, special ed kids. And the brother, you say, sister, can you handle that? His skill is not in that. She may have a skill in that. Let her do that. What we're talking about self-willed is brother, for example, sister, do me a favor, take this chair and put it over there. And you they take the chair and they decide, I'd rather put it over there. Or you say, take these men to a location to teach the gospel. And the brother goes, ah, I don't like that. I'm going to do something completely different than what you say. That's the self-willed brother or sister that I'm talking. Everybody understand the difference between taking initiative and self-willed. I hope so. Let me give you a few examples. Give me 2 Samuel 18 and verse 5. 2 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. 2 Samuel chapter 18 verse 5. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all, the, and all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. Because remember, Absalom, which was David's son, was being rebellious. He tried, to, he tried to take the kingdom from his father. He set up a coup d'etat. Is that how you say a coup d'etat? Against King David. So now... Everybody's trying, they want to get Absalom. So David tell, he gives the order. Take special care regarding Absalom, my son. 
okay? Notice we deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. Everybody got that, right? Now jump over to verse 14, what Joab does. Verse 14. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. So Absalom, Joab killed Absalom. That is not what King David said to do. King David said, deal gently with him. Bring him back to me. That's what David was telling him. Bring my son to me. Joab's, I'm smarter than the king, so I'm just going to kill this guy. So that's, self, that's an example of being self-willed. Let me give you another one. In case some of you in here may be new, you're still confused about taking initiative and being self-willed. Well, I'm confused. What's the difference? I'm showing you some more self-will. First Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 18. First Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 18. First Maccabees chapter 5 verse 18. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias. Now remember, the book of Maccabees takes place during the Greek captivity. All right, read it again. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azariah's captains of the people, with the remnant of the host in Judea to keep it, unto whom he gave commandments, saying, Take ye the charge of this people, and see that ye may not make not war against the heathen until the time that we come again. So Judah Maccabee and his brethren told Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, they were captains. You captains, you take charge of these people. Do not make war with the heathen until we come back. Number one, it's an honor. They were, they were two captains, and they had the charge of all Israel. To me, when I read that, that's an honor. You left us two to take care of all these people? Yes, you two are capable. The rest of us going to go do battle. All right? So now, jump over to verse... Uh, 56. Verse 56. And we're going to read down. Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captains of the garrison. These are the same two guys Judah gave commandment to. Heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. Which Judah Maccabees and his brothers and the rest of the Israelite warriors did. Go ahead. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name. Let us also get us a name. Go ahead. And go fight against the heathen that are round about us. Now didn't Judas Maccabee just tell them, do not fight against the heathen. Watch over the people till we get back. Read on. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went toward Jamnia. Then came Gorgias and his men out of the city to fight against them. Greeks, go ahead. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. Uh-oh. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. And there, and there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. 2,000 men got killed because of their self-willed brothers. You got to think about that and examine, do I have that type of a spirit? This is what should be going through your mind. Am I those guys? Okay? They didn't take initiative because they were commanded, don't fight. They were self-willed, said, we're going to fight. Why? Because we want to make a name for ourselves. Read on. Verse 61. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel, because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought to, but thought to do some valiant act. Y'all see that? But thought to do some valiant act. Right, go ahead. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those, by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. Now I want you to look at verse 62, because it's very, very relevant. Every generation, God has a chosen See that he's dealing with what regard irregardless like during the time of uh nat turner he was the one god was dealing with him oh he wasn't dealing with all of them when the time of denmark vesey time of marcus garvey there's certain seeds god said i'm gonna put a spirit on these men to do a b and c there's nobody on the side can go i want to do it too it don't work like that i'm giving another example you know during the uh, civil uh the march on washington there was about 20 to 30 speakers that went up there. But there was only one main speaker that everybody remembers. Who know who, who, who was that? Nobody knows who spoke that during the, you don't know, were you from Jamaica? During the March on Washington. Yes, see, Martin Luther King. But he wasn't the only speaker. There were many speakers, but nobody remembers their name. Nobody knows those guys. 
Because why? Because to do whatever he was doing on the Lord. And you got to think about it. Although it was not according to the scripture, because they didn't know the Bible. They did the best that they could for what, for what they had. The little civil rights that have been allotted us was at the behest of what MLK and many of those other civil rights leaders did. Okay? But what I'm showing you, read verse 62 again. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. So they felt, well, God is dealing with Judah Maccabee and his brother, God dealing with us too. And you know, I notice millennials do that. You can do it, I can do it too. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, no, you can't. Like, uh, I'll give that story another time. Read on. Verse 63. Mm -hmm. How be it the man, Judas, and his brethren were greatly renowned in the sight of all Israel and of all the heathen, wheresoever their name was heard of. So let me give you another one. Numbers chapter 14. I'm still dealing with the self-willed stage of disloyalty. Self-willed. This is the first stage of a disloyal brother or sister. Numbers 14 verse 40. We're going to start right there. Numbers chapter 14 verse 40. And, and they rose up early in the morning and got them up into You know, the I heard a brother say, it's okay if I commit adultery because King David did it. I'm going to tell you the difference between you and King David. You know what God said about King David? He said that King David was a man after his own heart. He loved King David. God don't love everybody in Israel the same. John the Baptist said that. John said, I forgot where it is. Y'all know where it is. Y'all find it for me. John said, Christ was preferred before me. You know what that is? Somebody, hold on. I got to find that one. Because as great as John was, because remember what Christ said. Christ said, above, of men born of women, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. But then John comes back about Christ. He said, Christ was chosen before me. What you got? John chapter 1, verse 15. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. You see that? So John understood. As great as he was, he said, Somebody's coming after me that's preferred, meaning preferred by God before me. All right? So John understood that. He understood that God was not dealing with everybody the same. But for some reason, black people don't understand that today. And I'm talking about brown people too. We go, everybody's the same God deal, everybody equal. That is not true. That is not true. <laughs> Back to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, verse 40. Mm -hmm. And they rose up well, early in the hold morning. Hold on, hold on. Bishop, that's, that's telling you they don't know the scriptures. They, they, a good example of that is in the seven churches. When you look at seven churches, all of them wasn't in the same level. Christ told you that. So what does that mean? There was different level. Most I was dealing with different level. That's why you see a lot of them, a lot of stuff that was fighting. Well, there was only about one or two of them that was perfect. So then I was not in the same level. Even the even the letters, when you look at all the letters Paul sent to the Corinth, to Gal Galatia, Ephesus, there was not in the same level. Paul make it clear there was not in the same level. When you're reading those letters, you can tell it was not in the same level. So, when we get to the book of Numbers, now I'm going to preface it for you. I don't know how many, how many, by raise a hand, how many of you are reading four chapters a day? Raise your hand. Only two, three brothers. No sisters and only three brothers. Wow, wow. Thank you, Captain Isaac. You're doing hey, a good job. Hey, that's horrible. Y'all making me look bad. That's horrible, bro. That's horrible. I'm telling you. So, let me preface with the history here. Moses had gotten uh, 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan. They all came back with a negative report except two, Caleb and Joshua. They came, Joshua and Caleb said, hey, we could take these damn big ashy Africans over here. We could take them down. They're Canaanites. And the rest of them said, no, they're giants in the land. They're going to kill us. The earth's going to swallow us up. We can't. We can't. We can't. So the Lord said, all right, fine. Because they didn't want to go, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to sit back and wait. So now... This continues the rest of the history right here. After God got mad and started jacking us up, look at Numbers 14 and verse 40. Let's start there. Watch what happens. Numbers chapter 14, verse 40. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, 
saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised. For we have sinned. They said, all right, we're going to do what God said. We're going to go take the land now. What? God told them to take the land back then. They said, no, we, ain't going, we can't do it. They make up their own time and say, okay, now we're going to do it. Watch what's said. Verse 41. And Moses said, wherefore now do we transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you. Moses said, don't go up. The Lord is not among you. He was with you back when he said to do it. But right now, don't do it. Go ahead. That ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you. And ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. Mm. But they presume but to they go. But they presume. That word presume meaning presumptuous. Meaning they were self-willed. Go ahead. But they presume to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites, which dwelt in that hill and smote them and discomfited them even unto Homa. You all see that? So the Lord wasn't dealing with them. He said, nope, my spirit's not with y'all. You were disobedient. You want to do your own thing? Now you're going to get jacked the hell up. Bishop, you know, you know a lot of you, you, let me show how heavy this scripture is. Even in your marriage, some of you are self will. For example, we tell the brother, hey, you see that she said, don't marry her. We say, sis, do not marry that brother. They went and do it anyway. Now they're going to hell. That's a self will spirit. Because when, listen, when, remember Moses, what Moses told him? Moses said, don't go up. Moses was the prophet. Most of was dealing with Moses in a different level. It's the same thing today. When a leadership, top leadership say, hey, bro, do not marry that sister. Where do you think that? You think he's going to say it? No. God is speaking to him and telling you, do not do it. Your, that's why your guy's going to hell. That's a self-will. Because, remember, remember what the scripture said? The scripture said, uh, what, what we, I don't said what we bless on earth is also blessed in heaven. How'd that go? Well, what is bound on earth what shall is be bound, bound in heaven. When, this is what you guys don't understand. <laughs> when the leadership, the officer that's over you, say, do not marry, that means he's in blessed that relationship. That's what that means. That's why you're going to hell. You know this, the one he say get married, they're always successful? That's because when he said it's okay, that means he already blessed it. Guess what, brother? It's the same thing if you show up to my house for my daughter. I said, okay. So now in the wedding day, I give you my daughter. So I blessed it. Isn't that the same thing? As the father, I blessed it. That's why. But if I didn't like you, I said, no, I'm not giving you my daughter. That means if my daughter and you go behind my back and sleep together, whatever happened, that's on you. I didn't bless that. And chances is not going to work out because I didn't bless it. It's the same thing. That's a self-will spirit. That's how deep this thing go. Watch this in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10. Remember, we're talking about the first stage of disloyalty. It's that self-willed brother, that self-willed sister. Go ahead. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lusts of uncleanness. So to walk after the flesh means to walk in sin. You're breaking God's laws in the lust of uncleanness. Go ahead. And despise government. Meaning God's government, God's leadership. God set up certain people over the congregation. It says, but these will despise government. You know what I realize about black people? We don't realize that God is setting up a government on earth. This is, as rickety rack as this is, with all the trials and struggles we go through, God is setting up a government. And <coughs> when the Lord returns, he's going to say, oh, this spirit here, this spirit, these are the spirits that I'm setting up. Okay, and guess what? Just like in the time of Moses, you had rebels. Why, why, why God choose Moses and Aaron? And who the hell are they? Same thing will happen in the wilderness, the re rebellious one. Why? The evidence is the same thing here on earth as we're bringing, trying to raise up. <laughs> who are you? You ain't nobody. You got whatever you can do. I could do better. Wasn't that a song in Sesame Street? Whatever. I don't know the song. I can do better. Da, 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 da. Anyway, read it again. Verse 10. 
but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lusts of uncleanness and despise government. Watch this. Presumptuous, Presumptuous are they. Presumptuous are they. We. Self-willed. What's that word? Self-willed. What's that word? Self-willed. Self-willed is the first stage of a disloyal brother or sister. Go ahead. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. You know what that means? You go to Facebook and YouTube. Them niggas ain't right. Look how much this nigga don't make no money over here. He ain't right. They wicked as hell. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. Yeah. Y'all don't see that? That's what the scripture is talking about. They ain't afraid to speak of God against God's men. They don't give a damn. That's what this verse is making reference to. So, does everybody understand the first stage of disloyalty? That's self-willed brother, self-willed sister. Okay. You're going to see signs of it here in Dallas. Watch. Because I see it from school to school. What's up? That one right there? Disloyal. <laughs> the second stage is called the offended stage. The offended stage is when a brother or a sister is in the midst of sin. Number one, they're wicked as hell. Uh, and every precept you go to, every precept or lesson that's taken, they see it as a personal attack on them. Let me give you an example from one of the old schools when I was at HODC. The le there was this brother. I mean, this dude was wicked as hell. I ain't going to call his name. The class we're going over is... Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. After the class, here he comes. Can I have a word with you on the side for a minute? Yeah, bro, what's going on? I think y'all did that class about me. Well, no, this is, we're working our way through the commandments, bro. Yeah, but I think it was about what, bro, check your spirit. Are you a liar? No, I ain't no liar. Then how could the class be about you? That's why we, we preface the class by examining yourself. You got to check your own self, Okay. When you know that you're wrong, you're in the midst of sin, you take everything as an attack. He, does he know what's going on? He know what I'm doing at home. I think my wife called him and told him what I'm doing. That's how Satan works on your mind. Because you what? You wicked as hell. You're doing some stuff you think nobody know about. God puts a spirit on us to do a lesson, and you take it as a personal attack. You don't take it as edification. Let me fix myself, make it myself right. You take it as they're throwing daggers at me. They hate me. They despise me. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Matthew 11, verse 6. This is what Christ said. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So Christ said, it's a blessed thing. So when the laws come out, the word of God comes out, Christ said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. You're blessed. But that brother or sister that is offended when the scriptures come out, there's a problem. We talk, here we at, we, uh, 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 we in one of the schools talking about whorish women. Here come the sister. I knew y'all was talking about, sis, we don't, we just met you. What you talking about? I knew the class was about me. I think Deacon told you. So. Deacon ain't tell us nothing about you, sis. You're, now her face was cracked and on the floor. Go sit your little nasty behind down somewhere. That's because she wicked as hell. She's been whoring, sucking this and sucking that all across the state. Now the scriptures come out, we did a personal attack on her. Don't you think if we knew you was doing it, we'd have threw your rotten behind out to school long time when? But you've been sitting there because we don't know what's going on, but that spirit in you, they're talking about you. They know what you did with Tyrone last night. She's sitting there mad now. <laughs> I got to get up and say something. Give me Matthew, Mark 4, 17, please. Mark 4, 17, this is the chapter where Christ talks about the four types of Israelites. But we're not going to go through all those four types. There's one type particular I want to talk about just for a moment, just for a moment. And it's verse 17. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. And have no root in themselves. This is that brother or sister who don't study. Watch what I'm about to say now. You don't study, you don't read four chapters a day as we advise you to do. Now let me tell you something. People say, Bishop, do you sit down and read four chapters a day? No, I don't. You know what I do? I'll put on my headphones and I'll listen to whole chapters. That's what I do. Like uh, day before yesterday, I read, not read, I listened to the whole book of Isaiah and the whole book of John. That's what I do. 
But maybe, and everybody in here got a different learning curve. Some people can do that, some can't, because you have a short attention span. So you're the type that needs to, especially when you first come in, you're the, you have to sit down and write notes to retain what's going on. Some brothers, some sisters can hear things and they can retain it. Everyone is not on the same uh, learning curve in here. Some brothers have said, uh, we've, uh, other schools, they, they only went as far as the fifth grade in reading. So their reading is not up to par. They said, what can I do? Say, listen, get audios and listen to the class because he's reading some words he can't pronounce. So we said, listening is better for you. Other brothers that listen don't work good for them. You got to know where your learning curve is. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So don't compare yourself to the brother next to you. I remember when I was in the academy, I, was, I had to read that dad going uh, penal law and police, all that stuff. Sit there, study. It was me and a couple of brothers. Study, study, study. There was this one Jake, and it was an Edomite. They read something one time, and they just retain it. Made me sick. But they had a better learn. I, I was not I was never that kid that could read something once. And re that, what do they call that? Photographic memory? I don't got that. Deacon Anton got that. He could read something once. He could tell you what he read three months ago. Oh, it's over here. Blah, 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 blah. I don't have that. I got to write it down. I got to have notes in my Bible. I got a slower learning curve. I'm aware of my, you got to know you. Everybody know what I'm saying? And don't compare yourself to somebody else. Okay. Now, Mark 4, 17 again. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. I'll give you another example. This is years ago. I remember reading, uh, I was trying to remember precepts. So I, had to, I got myself uh, index cards. And I would write, now they got apps for that now. I would write like uh, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. First John 5 and 3, um, all the love scriptures, Romans 13, 11, things like that. And I would, I would quiz myself while I was at work. You know, I'd just sit there and quiz myself. That's how I had to do it, just to retain basic stuff. Some people are not like that. They could just retain. Like my daughter. She's smart. She just retains stuff. I'm like, dang, my son be mad as hell. How come she remember everything? I say, hey, she, she's smarter than you, bro. <laughs> but go ahead. Read that again, Mark 4, 17. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. And have no root in themselves. Because you don't study. And so endure but for a time. You're only going to endure in this truth for a time if you're not studying and applying. Go ahead. Afterward. When affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. When persecution or affliction arises for the word's sake, meaning people are using scriptures to challenge you, come against you, go ahead. Immediately, they are offended. They are what? Offended. You get offended. This is that second stage, the offended stage. Oh, I can't take it no more. Okay, watch this. Give me 1 Kings 22 verse 8. Remember, when you are at that offended stage, every precept, every lesson you take as a personal attack on you, you are at the offended stage. First Kings 22, let me get it, and verse 8. First Kings chapter 22, verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man. Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Because he was a prophet. Micaiah was a prophet. Jehoshaphat didn't like Micaiah, as you're going to find out. Go ahead. But I hate him. But I hate him. Why? For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. So now, what's, what's going on here? Jehoshaphat hated Micaiah. Anything Micaiah prophesied, it was evil Towards, it was taken as evil towards Jehoshaphat. Why? Because Jehoshaphat was wicked as hell. The king wasn't right. He wasn't in his right mind and his right spirit. So every prophecy Micaiah brought out, he said, he said that because he hates me. And I hate that nigga right there. That's some of y'all. Some of y'all listening right now, everything that comes out, he did this against me. What? Jump over to uh, verse um, 18. Verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy not no good concerning me, but evil? See there? That's what, <laughs> this king could not stand this prophet. He hated him. And when you see, he said everything this dude says is always some daggone evil towards me. Now, if, you, if all he had to do was get his spirit right, and no prophecies would have came for good. But everything that came out, he knew it was bad against him because he was wicked as hell. 
And that's where you got to take that and say, you know, when these scriptures come out, let me examine me. Let me examine myself. Self-examination. From there, I want to talk about the third stage of disloyalty, which is the passive stage. You know, I keep hitting this daggone button under my chair. <laughs> the passive stage is when a brother or sister pulls back. They refuse to do the work. They refuse to do their duties in hopes that you fall. They have an inflated sense of importance. They have a you need me attitude. And the proof that you need me, I'm not going to do my duties in the congregation. I'm going to pull back and just watch. I'm going to watch out for it. And we went through that. Remember in when we first set up the first IUIC school? Remember the, the brother who was the elder with me and his wife? They stopped doing, stopped teaching. Stopped, she was over the, what was she over? She was over the, the bread and all of that and the kids. She was over the kids. She stopped doing everything. He stopped dealing with the brothers. She stopped dealing with the sisters. They said, y'all going to fall. Step back, pull back. That is the third stage. That's called the passive stage. Watch this. Sirach 37. And you watch. You're going to see. You're going to see. Mic check. Hey, we have that here. Mm. We have that here with uh, some of the officers. I, uh, it is what it is. Some of the, the officers' wives. And y'all know who y'all are. Scripture says the two shall become one flesh. So you know you got to, if you got a little passive demon at home just waiting. And the, the reason they do that is they, the reason they do that is to, is to try you. It's to try on your faith. Because a lot of y'all going to end up falling out because of your wives. I'm telling you. Yep. You got to check yourself. So you, the, yeah, I did it again. The, the leadership um, gives you a duty. And what the spirit guides them, hey, handle this, handle that. And you decide, I'm not going to do it no more. I'm going to wait till y'all. That's an evil spirit. Because I want you to fall. I want, I want like, the, like the, that last group. Like to do with the art, the little uh, weasel eel dude. He said, there's no other artist could do what I do. Nobody could do videos like me. Y'all going to fall. Mosai said, I, don't worry. I got nine other brothers. that." Right. He said, he built this. Mosai said, I got nine other brothers that can do what he can do and better. Now he mad. <laughs> so overinflated self of, uh, of importance, sense of importance. Uh, brothers, some of you, I think you look at this the wrong way. I want to re-examine the whole thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want something by you. Remember in the wilderness, right? Most I got, Moses then was the number one man. The second man was Aaron, right? Remember some of the Israelites, they want Moses' spot. But remember, there was Moses' peak captains, officers, elders. They didn't, they didn't understand the responsibility. They, didn't, they really didn't understand what it is that most like God put them over. Same thing today. Those spirits come back today. I'm going to give you an example. I remember when we was in 1088. I was, Bishop put me over the, the floor, the cleaning floor. I was, I was because it wasn't big. I was uh, over the floor, the bathroom, the cleaning. And then I was over the, uh, to buy stuff for the kitchen stuff. I love that thing, bro. I love that thing. Every Saturday, we got to clean this. We got, just what I, what, this is what I was doing. I was making sure I clean it fast because I want to stand next to them when they're working those scriptures. So I make sure, you know what I'm saying? So I make sure. Yes, I'm going to listen to the scriptures, but I make sure my job get done first. So I make sure it's done fast. But the, the reason I see you guys looking at different, how many of you are from the tribe of Judah? Why must I got call you first? Are you sure? Because think about it. Every single Jew that has walked to that door after you, you're responsible for him. Do you know that? You guys didn't look at it like that, huh? He called you. F Why he called you first? Is th does that make you it's because you're more special than the other ones? No. There is something in you you cannot see, but God see it. That little office you had just mopped the floor, think about it. Every single other person who come here, they put them in the same duty with you. You over them. Think about it. You guys look at it the wrong way. Every single man that's walked to that door, you over them. Why? What's so special about you? Why must I get them call them first? 
Remember the example Musa just gave about Bezalel? Where's Bezalel today? Think about that. That's right. Everybody in here is replaceable. For me, every, all of us are replaceable. Uh, so what did I say go? Sirach uh, 37, 7 through 9. Sirach chapter 37, verse 7. Now remember, we're talking about the third stage of disloyalty, which is the passive stage. When a brother or sister pulls back from the duties that they've been given in hopes that the body falls. They have an inflated sense of importance. You, they have a you need me attitude. I don't need you. Go ahead. Every counselor extolleth counsel, mm -hmm. but there is some that counseleth for himself. Some people counsel for themselves. Go ahead. Beware of a counselor. And know before what need he hath, for he will counsel for himself, lest he cast the lot upon thee. Watch this. And say unto thee, thy way is good. And afterward he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. You see that? He's going to tell you, you're going to ask, hey, should I do A, B, or C? He's going to, he or she says, yeah, yeah, go do that. But now they're just waiting to see what's going to happen to you. Because their hopes that you get jacked up and fall. You fall and get jacked up. That's what they're hoping for. So it said, you got to beware of people like that. If they pull back, that's what, what it say? It said, uh, it says, and say unto thee, thy way is good. And afterward, he stand on the other side. I Meaning he pulled back, he's just watching you to watch to see if you fall and get jacked the hell up. You got to watch people like that. All right. Give me another one. Give me Jeremiah 48.10. This is what God said about war. Watch this. But it's going to correlate with the scriptures too. This was war against Moab. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Go ahead. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. So, cursed be he that does the work of the Lord deceitfully. Cursed be he that holds back his sword from blood. When God gives a commandment to war and do something, he says, don't do it deceitfully and don't hold back. Now, I'm going to give you an example. 1 Samuel 15. We're going to start at verse 1. With King Saul. This was the chapter that you read about in, um, in the movie Birth of a Nation. When Nat Turner was reading, it zoomed in on 1 Samuel chapter 15. If you look close at the movie and it panned down, it gives you the, the commandment that was given to Saul. Go ahead. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Taliyim. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye show kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah unto until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt and he took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of, and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was violent refuse that they destroyed utterly. So what are we reading about here? Saul held back his sword from blood. He decided to do the work of the Lord deceitfully. God said, destroy all Amalek when you come across them. Saul said, I'm going to keep Agag, and I'm going to keep the best of the sheep. God said, destroy everything. Saul decided, nah, I'm not going to do that right there. So when you read down in the chapter, this is where the Lord tells him rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And it says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. That's verse 23 in the same chapter. So what are we getting out of this? That passive stage where I'm not going to do 
what I was commanded to do. I'm going to hold back. I'm going to pull back. And the Lord going to jack, he jacks spirits like that up. And you'll see that in the congregation. When a man or a woman gets an attitude, the work of the Lord becomes garbage to them. They want to see you fall. They say, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to watch you fall because you need me. You got to remember something. What did John, give me that in uh it might be Matthew. I know it's one of the four gospels where he said, think not to say to yourselves, we be Abraham's seeing. I think it was John said that in Matthew 3. Let me look. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. If you can understand that verse alone, that John said to the Pharisees, your, your sense, your over, uh, what did I just say? Your, your sense of importance will quickly be deflated. John is telling them just because you're Abraham's seen, don't see, don't mean nothing with the Lord. Because God can raise up children of Abraham out of rocks. Your mind should go, But not these guys. They really, I'm Abraham. See, I'm, I'm the shizzle. Ah, ha, ha. They didn't understand. John understood that, though. We understand that. So we're tra- hoping that as brothers and sisters come in this truth, they can understand that. Okay? So that's the third stage of disloyalty, that passive stage. The fourth stage is the criticism stage. Criticism, criticism. That's... Uh, when a brother or sister has an evil eye towards everybody and finds fault in everyone except themselves. You ever notice some people, they find, they look around, you know, you might get on him or her about something. After that, it's on. Now they find fault in this one, this one, this one, that one. Look at him, look at him, look at everyone, look at her and her. They sit back and criticize everybody. It's a negative. Of course, some criticism is healthy criticism. You know there's a difference between Negative criticism and positive criticism. Positive criticism builds your character, builds your esteem, helps you study. That's positive, okay? Negative is they just tan you down. That's, there's a big difference. I'm talking about that negative criticism. Give me that Matthew 7, 3 to 5. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. One thing you got to realize about people that always have negative criticism, they got the devil on them. They are filled with sin themselves. Therefore, they can see no good in you. That makes them feel good. I got to put you down so that I can feel good about me. That's the devil. Read that again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? You know a mote is something small. And a beam is something big. Notice what Christ is saying. Why beholdest thou the mote, something small, that is in your brother's eye, but considerest not the beam, that huge lump of timber wood is in your eye. (laughs) Hey, you got something in your eye. Meanwhile, he got this big thing right here on his eye. And he he or she can't see it. Okay? This is the beginning of that criticism stage of disloyalty. Watch this. 2 Samuel 15, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 15, verse 3 and 4. 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said moreover, O that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Right. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. When you read from above and read the whole chapter, what Absalom was doing was putting down David, his father. He was saying, if I was king, this is how I would deal with it. My father, he don't have the wisdom or understanding that I have. He would put down his father to get the love of the people. and He would kiss the hand and flatter the people. That's what he was doing. Now watch this. Get Sirach 37 and 10. Sirach 37, which is Ecclesiasticus. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it. 
chapter 37 and verse 10. Right. Consult not with one that suspected thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Mm -mm. Now, this uh, suspects thee, and someone that envies thee deals with somebody, they have an evil eye towards you. They are overly critical towards you. They have a problem with you. What verse did you leave off at? That was the end of verse 10. Read 10 again. Consult not with one that suspected thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. You see where it says consult not with one that suspected thee. Suspect thee of what? Being evil. They suspect you of being in the midst of sin. The Bible says don't consult with people like that. It says, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. I've spoken with a few brothers in one school, and I remember one brother said, because um, he went with us somewhere, and I don't want to say where, because you might figure out who I'm talking about. But anyway, everything this brother touched went wrong. And I said, bro, something's going on. I said, are you all right? I said, because you rolling with us, and this went wrong, that went wrong. Everything we put you over fell apart, went to hell in a handbasket. I said, there's a spirit rolling, which was everything all right? So he pauses, and he says, no, I'm dealing with, with a spirit of hatred. So I said, hate towards what? He said, one of my peers. I said, your peer? He said, yeah, officer so-and-so. I said, so what's wrong with officer so-and-so? He says, well, he's excelling above me. We came in together, but for some reason he's promoted above me. And he's helping brothers and counseling brothers, and, and that thing's pissing me off. I said, bro, you should see that you know him glean from, you want to learn from brothers like that. When men see certain people excel and, and want them to excel, you want to be around those spirits to learn, know what they know. Follow their example. I said, you got to look at it as a positive, not a negative. I said, because he's your peer. You have his personal phone number. You talk to him a lot, right? He goes, yeah. <coughs> Why don't you take that as an opportunity for good rather than you see it as something evil? Now you're hating his brother. I said, that's a, that's a excuse my word, lack of word, my word. That's a nigga spirit. That's how black and brown people deal in the world, okay? Always jealous of the next man, the next woman. We can't roll like that. The scripture says to share, uh, what does it say? Share our gifts. It says, uh, what's the, how does the parable go that Christ gave? It called uh, talents. Share your talents. That's how we got to be. Don't hide it. Okay, give me a uh, Second Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> Here go one sister. She's going to send us a, a letter. Um, what is it called? The complaint form. So I'm reading a complaint form. Uh, this is sister so and so. I don't like the sisters here in so and so school because nobody eats my bread. So I write the sister back. I said, uh, "Well, why do you think they don't eat your bread?" She says, "Well, they have hatred towards me." I said, "Have you considered just for a moment that you can't cook?" Oh, I could cook, brother. Oh, I could cook. And I realize a lot of people are in denial about themselves. I said, "Have they have they passed your food out?" She says, no. I said, well, have the sister sat around and tasted your food. She said, yes. I said, okay, so they know whether or not you can cook or not cook. Is that fair to say? She goes, well, I just think they, they hate me. So I said, well, sister, if these senior women are not comfortable eating or disseminating your food, I'm not going to eat it either. Bishop, some of this food, when you eat it, you can tell Jesus was not there. <laughs> Hell, Jesus, like, I got to go. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 2. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. Wait, start at 1. Verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. So when Paul was amongst them, he based himself, meaning he humbled himself. That's what it means by base among them. It says in being absent, but being absent and bold toward you, he wrote powerful letters to the Corinthians. Go ahead. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Paul's right. 
I want y'all to see what Paul was going through. Look at verse 2 closely. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you with that confidence. Remember, in verse 1, he said, when I'm among you, I base myself, I humble myself. I spoke gently to everybody. But when I'm absent, I write heavy letters to make sure everything's in order. Look at verse 2. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. He said, I don't want to come to you face to face and I got a rail on you. That's what he's saying. Wherewith I think to be bold against some. Why would he be bold against some? What did they do? Well, look, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh, I mean, according to sin. You had some people in the Corinthian church leadership who were saying Paul was wicked as hell. Overly critical, criticizing the leadership. That's what Paul was dealing with when you read the letters of the Corinthians. Watch verse 10. Verse 10. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Now look at it. For his letters, say they, meaning certain men leadership in Corinthians, are weighty and powerful. Meaning he writes hard things hard to be understood, but watch this. But his bodily presence is weak. Meaning what? He looked like a punk. That's what they're telling us, about, saying about Paul. This dude looked like a punk. We could take him. This dude ain't nothing. Then it says, and his speech contemptible. He talk a lot of ish. That's what, when you tell somebody that your speech is contemptible, meaning you talk a whole lot of sh. These dudes was rebellious. This is what Paul had. To, when you read the letters of the Corinthians, Paul was going through a lot with this one church right here. Going through a lot. Look at 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> verse 11. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chief, chiefest apostles. Though I be nothing. Wait, pause right there. Look at that thing. I am become a fool in glory. You, ye, meaning you Corinthians, have compelled, you have forced my hand. That's when you compel me and you force me. Force you to what? Look what it says. For I ought to have been commended of you. Y'all should have honored me as an apostle, as a leader. Then it says, it says for, meaning because, in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. What? They were saying Paul was what? Nothing. He said, okay, y'all consider me nothing, but when you examine my works, I'm not behind none of the apostles, the 12. In fact, guess what? When you read his resume, he did more than all the 12. Three quarters of the New Testament is Paul, the apostle Paul. But the Corinthians was saying, you ain't ish, you ain't nothing. He said, y'all should have commended me. But instead, now I got to argue with you about who I am in this truth. This is what Paul was going through. That's that fourth stage of a disloyal brother, that criticism stage. You ain't this, you ain't that. Everybody understand that? <coughs> now, understand, so those are the four stages of disloyalty to, to look out for in men and women. Loyal, understand this, write this down, loyalty breeds loyalty. Watch this in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2. Hey, here's another thing. You can be, y'all can bear with. Has anybody, I'm just very curious, separated from the body and become successful on their own? I want y'all to examine all the people that rebelled, cursed us out, went on their own, and said, if you could do it, we could do it. Has one been successful? In my years, I've been what, 13 years? Mm -hmm. That's never happened. That's never happened because I'll go back, go back to Egypt when we leave, when we left Egypt in the wilderness, right? Remember, Bishop mentioned about the government. Most I got always build a government. No matter where we at, he always build a government. Most has built a government in the wilderness, starting with Moses. Of course, Moses didn't make it to the promised land. Joshua ended up taking over the government to the to the to the promised land. But however, Mosai got built a government. What happened to everybody that was rebelling against that government? They all die. He killed every single one of them that was rebelled against the government. Those who are saying, oh, Moses, you're not the only one he used. 
What happened to them? They didn't succeed. He, he killed all of them. It's the same thing today. When you look at IYC, it's listen. I don't care what anybody said about IYC. Our work speaks for itself. You can hate us, you can love us. One thing you will say, you will you will well, you will not admit it, of <laughs> course, that nobody is doing the work the way we're doing the work. Most of God is using us. Period. You can hate us, you can love us. Most of God is using IUIC for his glory. We go where no other camp ever go. And I'm, when I say no other camp, I'm talking about even came back then. Never went. We uh, IUIC went. So you try to tell me most of guys not using IUIC? Most of guys using IUIC. So when you left, no. The, the spirit didn't live with you. The spirit stay. That's, you know how I know? Because you never succeed. Because I hear brother said, I build that camp. Well, okay, let me see you build another one then. Let me see you. Be, uh, so far, I haven't seen it. If one of you see it, let me know. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen nobody left and they're like, oh, we build our see. Okay, go build another one then. I ain't see it happen yet. What you do see is that as we're going to, as, as we continue in this lesson, is that disloyalty, just as loyalty breeds loyalty, disloyalty breeds disloyalty. Bishop, uh, real quick. Um, it's a. A lot of things happened in Texas, and all praise of the Most High. Satan took out a lot of evil people that was never prosperous. The Most High was never dealing with them. But this is the point why I, I want to make. It's a couple that reached out to us recently, and they said we was we was with Uzi, We was watching them, and soon we saw how they wasn't doing no works, and we seen the Spirit wasn't dealing with them anymore. And they was watching our classes, and they heard Bishop say. Well, y'all that's watching online right now that left y'all not in the truth no more and the husband told leadership in Houston he said he looked at his wife and they both looked at each other and said we feel it we not in the truth no more and I'm telling y'all straight up if they probably got a glimmer of hope you know meaning that what maybe the most I might start putting that spirit on them to be humble because that's that sense of pride because you have a deceitful reason why you leaving all these people that left out of here didn't know nothing about nothing, but they really want to go back to their sin. That's the point that we're making. And that's why it's heavy when you look at all the works that IUIC is doing and the most high using the leadership and showing you that the spirit is here. Brothers and sisters got to put that fear on them and constantly meditate on what can I do to fill a void on doing the work of the most high and feeling blessed that the Lord will use you. All right. Like I said, they looked at they looked at each other and they told leadership. I mean, they called leadership and said, "Please let us come back. Let us at least watch online. We ain't in the truth no more." You know, that's some heavy stuff. Now, remember, like I said before, loyalty breeds loyalty, just as disloyalty breeds disloyalty. Let me tell you what I mean. Look at Acts twenty and verse thirty. Acts chapter 20, verse 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Now watch that. I want you to pay close attention to that verse. That's disloyalty, what he's dealing with, what Paul is talking about right there. When, if you look at the prophets, they started, it's usually one, two, or three, and then it grew from there. That's the same thing that happened with IUIC. It was me. One brother, next brother, next brother, three of us. Then came deacons started coming. Then the captains came and so forth and so on. It grew like that for one for me. When you got a, somebody that says, you know what? I'm going to draw away disciples after myself, meaning they're in the body. This is what this verse is saying. When it says speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them, they don't have the spirit to stand on the street themselves to build from just them. What they do is try to deceive men and women to follow them. That's not leadership, neither is that loyalty. And guess what? The group that leads with you, you think they're going to be loyal and you've showed yourself disloyal to the body you were with? I want you to think about it for a moment. The group of people that leave with you, they see you're disloyal to everybody. And they may sit with you a week, two weeks, maybe a month, maybe three months. But after a while, they're going to say, you're disloyal, I'm going to be disloyal too. And guess what? They're going to take a group they left with you. That just that happened in uh, Texas, just uh, Dallas here. The group with uh, what, what was that? I forgot that brother's name. He te what's what's corner you speak on? 
No, not Coach D. Mm -mm, the other dude. No, not him. I'm going to get him in a minute. The other one. He was with us. Uh, he did a video on Facebook. Oh, um, saying all. I don't know that brother's name. What's his name? The guy's uncle. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. That's his name right there. Left with a group of brothers. I'm going to show wicked men are. He left with a group of brothers. Me, Deacon Abiel came, I forgot what year that was. You wasn't with us. I was right there. You, you was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he said to Deacon Abiel, he said, I want to come back to IUIC, but I want to have rank over the people. Right. right. Abiel said, no, it don't work like that, bro. You want to be grandfathered in. What the right. hell this is? You think this is T-Mobile? Right. <laughs> Abiel told him, you left with that dude with Shakya, cursed us out. Now you want to come back and be over the it, He said, the word of God don't work like that. So now he so he does a Facebook video rather than tell the truth that yes we told him he could come back but he has to start again as a member he didn't want that he wanted to be over the people but that's not in his video what's his name Jephthah that's that dude Bishop he we uh in the Dallas school I don't know how many brothers and sisters was here at the time they gave him uh the soldiers test. He took the test out of fear and he went and sat in the back. And before you know, everybody like, where the brother test at? He ain't turned it in. We look, he done ran out to school like a female. Hey, brothers. Same thing. When you look at a tree, the, the tree. Oh, I tell my point. My yeah, point behind telling that story was he did the video because they just had a split. Yeah. He was disloyal. So the group that left with him. They caused a split and said, we're going to be disloyal to you. That's why I did the video. And the same thing with uh, Shakya. He took a group. Then half that group said, you was disloyal. We're going to be disloyal to you. Mm -hmm. And they we're going to do our own thing. Yeah. They said he's worse than their auntie. Right. Man, you know, you know, when you look at a tree, right? I, I always give that example. The tree don't start in the leaves. It's possible. It starts from the root. The root start with him. Now, when you look at a tree, when you look at the leaves, none of the leaves grow the same day. It takes time for the branches to grow. So uh, that's, what I, that's how IUIC starts. So uh, now IUIC, the, the tree, the branches go everywhere. You got myself is in Atlanta. I was on the bishop. I'm one of the branches. You got captain. The branches grow. So now you broke yourself from that tree. You said you, you that leaves that, you that leaves in the tree that fade. And with it away. Now you said, I want to go back to that tree, but I want to be, you, you got to uh, take a pen and, and put you back in. No, no, no. You got to go back to the, to, the, to the roots. So you can, no, we're not going to put you over the leaves. No. What about the leaves that, that, was, that was fit for to the, to the, to the, to the, to the roots? Well, we're just going to just ignore them and just put you out of it. No, we're not going to do that. You're going to start all over again. Um. Bishop, you, would you, could I bring out a precept real quick on what you, what the deacon just said? Uh, Psalms 1 and 1. I'm going to tell y'all, uh, brothers and sisters, one of the keys to striving in this truth is knowing when you see BS and getting the hell away from it. That's what that's what Romans 13, uh, 16, 17 about. But let me read this precept dealing with what uh, the deacon just said. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So when you see the ungodly doing counsel, that means you're not supposed to be over in that direction. Come on. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So you see somebody disrespecting the men that came before them, you're not supposed to be nowhere in that realm of that because the most high about to judge that thing. Come on. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's why you see IUIC being prosperous, because we meditating and doing it day and night. Come on. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's what you see we doing right now. It ain't The tree ain't withering away. The tree getting stronger. So I just want to bring that out. That's a that's a good point right there. The um I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh okay, so loyalty breeds loyalty, and I'm gonna show you that. Get first Corinthians four verse two. First Corinthians four verse two. First Corinthians chapter four verse two. Moreover, it is required in stewards 
that a man be found faithful. So this whole truth is us becoming stewards. We're all stewards in this truth, okay? It says we must be found faithful, okay? Who knows what a scripture that says, uh, teach those who will be able to teach others. I believe it's somewhere in Timothy. Where is it? Find that for me. Yes, 2 Timothy 2 and 2, that's it. Second. Stewards must be faithful. Another word for faithful is loyal. That's what's going on. When you, when you say you're faithful to God, you're saying you're loyal to God, okay? Paul said, be followers of me even as I am of Christ. You know what I notice a lot of people do? People say, and, and they get stupid. People get stupid. Paul said, be followers of me even as I am of Christ. So you would talk... Uh, uh, Captain Dallas, talk about IUIC. All right. IUIC is just um, a, a, a banner, but we all, guess who we're all following? Christ. So they say, no, I'm not loyal to IUIC. I'm loyal to the Lord. This is what Weasel Elanham said. I'm going to tell you why people say, I'm not loyal to man on earth. I'm loyal to Christ. Is, who can show me Christ walking around right now? Is, any, is Christ walking around with us right now on earth? I'm talking about in body, is he? No. So when people say, no, I'm not following what man says, I'm following Christ, that means I can do whatever I want. They don't, men like that don't believe. Men and women like that don't believe. So when Paul said, be followers of me, even as I am of Christ, Paul was not saying, listen, I'm Christ. He was saying, me as a leader in this truth, just follow what I'm saying. Because what, what was Paul teaching them? The scriptures. Paul was not making his own thing up. You men and women are able to check whether or not what we're saying is scriptural or not. You have a Bible. I have a Bible. We're reading together, okay? So we're not saying, hey, go sell you behind on the street. Bring, back us, bring that money back. Ain't nobody doing that because you know that's not scriptural. Like a sister says, uh, so you're saying I got to be subject to my husband. Sister, the Bible says you got to be subject to your husband in all things and everything. So if he tell me I got to sell my behind on the street, sis, don't be simple. Don't be, this is how people get stupid. We, she knows and we know the Bible is not saying you got to listen to a man, your husband, telling you to sell you behind on the street and bring the money back. That's common sense, but that the devil gets in there. Nah, see, you shouldn't have to listen to him, your husband. Do what you want to do. You follow Jesus. You don't follow your husband. See, I'm following Jesus. I don't follow my man. That's the devil right there. Okay, that's the devil. We're going to see when the Lord returns. Well, he's going to watch when he set this government up. You're going to find out. Where was we at? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Loyal men. Faithful men is loyal men. Commit this truth to faithful men, to loyal men. Go ahead. Who shall be able to teach others also. Who may be able to teach others also. I see brothers on the street trying to teach crackheads and winos. Let me tell you all something. You're wasting your time. You put a flyer, roll, put it in the pocket, fine. Do not sit there trying to teach a crackhead. It says, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. In that, uh, that uh, inebriated state of mind, are they able to teach anybody? No. So why? Let me give you a description, Mr. Crackhead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wait. Bro, you being simple as hell over there. <laughs> Give me Psalms 119, verse 74. Loyalty breeds loyalty. Faith breeds faith. Psalms 119, verse 74. Psalms chapter 119, verse 74. They that fear thee. They that fear thee. Will be glad when they see me. Will be glad when they. You hear what David said in the spirit? What? What does that mean? Loyalty going to breed loyalty. I serve the Lord. You serve the Lord. We happy when we see each other. You at work sitting around a bunch of no good, you know what I mean? You see a brother or sister, yeah, hey, hey, shalom, shalom. You happy. Why? Because you spent your whole time at work with fornicators, liars, and adulterers. And you sick of the conversation. I remember I was sitting at work. We in the office. They're going to put on a porno. I mean, what the hell is this? <laughs> I had to go out. I'm looking around. I go downstairs. I saw uh, Deacon Malachi. I said, hey, bro. He was working across the street. I went over there. I spent the whole day. I I can't go back up in that office. They got the devil on them. So read that again. <laughs> Psalms chapter 119, verse 74. 
They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. You want to be like that. Hey, some, there's an expression. We saw it in it's a movie called Cold Pursuit. It says some people bring joy whenever they come around. Others bring joy whenever they leave. Can y'all pick up on what's being said by that thing right there? <laughs> some people bring joy whenever they come around. Some bring joy whenever they leave. Hey. <laughs> it might hurt some people's feelings, but I really don't care. We have that in here. We have that in here. You got sisters in here like that, and you got brothers in here like that. Bring joy when they leave. That's the good part. Yeah. Save, hey. stay out. That's horrible, bro. You want you want to be that spirit when come hey, like a woman. Y'all see that show uh Cheers? Everybody seen Cheers? When the fat guy comes in, they go, no! Everybody glad when everybody knows your name. Dun, dun, dun. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about? You know what's so, you know what's so crazy? I'm a deacon, but I got brothers that have no rank. I'd rather pick up the front for them than a the brother who got rank. Damn. I'm dead serious. You know, I'm a truck driver. I'm in the road. So that means I got time after it. When a brother call me, I actually love that. Because the time go by fast. We talk about scriptures. We talk about staying. The time go by fast. But when the officer call me, sometimes I don't pick up. I'm like, <laughs> I got the regular brothers. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Hey, shalom, brother. What's going on? We talk for hours. Seriously, I got brothers that have no rank. Me and them, we talk for hours on the phone. And sometimes I be like, I look at the phone. I'm like, yo, we've been talking for like three hours. I got to go. But some officers, I'm like, nah. The hell is going on? I'm good. I don't. <laughs> Seriously, bro. That's cold. That's cold. So loyalty, again, lo always remember that loyalty breeds loyalty. And that's something black and brown people have not understood yet. But with the Bible, we're learning it now. So just as loyalty breeds loyalty, disloyalty breeds disloyalty. Write that down. Disloyalty breeds disloyalty. I'm going to show you that. Sirach 10 and 2. Now, this is a very generic verse. It's, it's somewhat vague. It doesn't go positive or negative, so you can use it either way. But I'm going to show you. I'm using it in this context for the discussion. Disloyalty. Watch this. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 2. Because verse 1 talks about a wise judge. Verse 3 talks about an unwise king. Verse 2 is very vague. Watch this. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So when you, when you think about it, it's not saying whether or not the judge is wise or unjust. It just says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So, for example, you have Captain Isaac. So when I come here, I'm expecting his, the officers under him to be like him. Just like the deacons under me are like me, the captains under them are like them. Okay? So now, if I am a thief-lying bastard, you can sure expect he's going to be a thief-lying bastard. And expect he's going to be a thief-lying bastard. And so are all officers going to be thief-lying bastards. But if I'm a man of the most high, I love this truth, he's going to be that way. He's going to be that way. Read that verse again. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You know what that verse, now this is in the male context. This is saying the same thing. Remember it says about women in Ezekiel 16, as is the mother, so is the daughter. It's saying the same thing. Saying the same exact thing. So, loyalty breeds loyalty. Disloyalty breeds disloyalty. Proverbs 28, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 21. To have respect of persons is not good. For for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. Right. So that's how Judas was. Remember, he gave Christ up for 30 pieces of silver. For for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. To have respect of persons is not good. Why? It says, be, the word for means because for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. That's why you got to know what people have need of. They will sell you out quickly. 
Okay? That's disloyal. Disloyal. Watch this. Give me chapter 29 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Understand that. When the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase, but the righteous shall see their fall. Okay, no matter if we get the short end of the stick. I always tell brothers, they'll have a problem with somebody, and it will look as if the wicked have won the battle. And they'll call. I said, bruh. I remember, oh, you know, uh, I forgot the brother with the little arm that was in New York. He had a big afro. I forgot his name. He called me. He said, uh, this brother, it was deacon such and such that's gone. He's wicked as hell. He ain't right. I said, do you have any proof of what you're saying? He says, no. I said, well, do me a favor. Because I don't choose. I, I'm in New York. They was in, where was that at? Here, Dallas, Texas. I said, you have no proof to what you're saying? I said, you believe in the most high? He goes, Yes. I said, well, be quiet. Let the Lord deal with this. I said, because if a man is wicked, surely he can't hide. It's going to come out. Just be patient. Next Saturday comes. You also remember, they, 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 it, you remember that? The brother couldn't contain himself. He stands up cursing deacon, the deacon out. The deacon said, you got any witnesses? No. So then the deacon, the captain, the officers that was in Dallas, threw that nigga out, threw him out to school. He going to call me up crying. I said, bro did not listen to my counsel. I told you, if you believe in the most high, just endure, be silent. But you decided you wanted to attack the man. So now months later, maybe, I think maybe a year, all hell broke loose with that particular, and I said, hey, remember what brother so-and-so said? He was right. This is what he was saying. But at that time, there was no evidence. It came out much later. And that's what brothers and sisters need to understand. You may see something, but nobody else see it. Remember the issue with the other elder that was here? I saw things. I said, but I said, if I tell these deacons what I see in this man, they're going to think I have an evil eye towards them. I said, I'm going to be quiet. I'm not going to say nothing. I said, I'm going to put it in God's hand. Sure enough, he railed up one day, and then y'all saw it for yourselves. And they would say, Bishop, you, you knew he was like that. I said, yeah, I knew he was like that. You had to see it for yourself. Because <clears throat> if I tell you, you're not going to believe me. You may think I'm the devil for even saying it. Some things you got to just sit back and let the Lord reveal it. In time, it's going to come if you believe on the most high. I hit it again. Bam. Uh, read that again. Proverbs 29, 16. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. i give you another example. Here in Dallas, Texas, there was a brother. Remember, I got to talk about Coach D. You know y'all favorite Coach D. Coach D, Coach Dangalang, this guy, a brother called me about him and said, now it was a brother, he ain't here no more. He said, Coach D, he uses Hebrew name, but I'm just saying Coach D. Coach D is the devil. He ain't right. I said, bro, do you have any evidence? I'm in New York. I don't know what's going on over there in Dallas. He says, well, it's just me right now. I said, anybody else? He mentioned uh, a certain other brother. So I call those brothers up. Nobody justified or admit it to what he was saying. I said, bro, you're on your own in this thing. I said, my advice to you, be quiet. That's because right now it's only you. I said, if you believe in the same thing, same advice, if you believe in the Lord, leave it alone. He goes, no, nah, I got to leave. He leaves. He don't come back. Coach D rolls up because it was something about dealing with women. Sure enough, uh, he had sex with me. And then remember what Coach D hit, did? He said, that sister want to be my wife? This married sister want to be my wife? And the king, remember, that, remember that? You know what I'm talking about? He basically said, if I'm going down, I'm going to bring all these hoes down with me. Wicked as hell. So I said, that's what the brother was saying, but he didn't have patience to wait and let it be made manifest. Some things you may see, you got to wait, because nobody else is going to see it. Just going to sit back and wait. Good the example. I know some of you thinking what happened on us then. None of us, none of us pick it up. That's not true. We just never said nothing. For years, Deacon Labaka, myself, Deacon Malakaya, we know what was going on in Austin. Many, many years, that bishop, we go to bishop, we say, hey, we got to take Aston down. Bishop say, nope, don't do it. Leave it alone. Every Passover, I come to you. I was like, bishop, we got to do something about Passover Austin. This camp right there, they got a heavy, heavy covetous spirit. 
Bishop said, no, leave it alone. I'm telling you, it's going to manifest. That's exactly what happened. So we listen. We say, okay, we leave it alone. But we see it coming. I know some people are thinking, oh, yeah, this thing. No, we know it was coming. We just never said nothing. We yeah. just wait. Because the spirit of covetousness, uh, it's an internal sin. It's something you desire. They were all about money. So my train of thought, the spirit was showing me, if they took the leadership down, the leadership could easily say, we, did, we were doing Black Wall Street. You got original royalty in there. They could have easily threw the boomerang back. Pop out. We'd have been like, oh, shoot. I knew it was deeper than that. I knew it was, I said, there's something else, but we, it's not manifest yet. Because then they could have went to the other camps and said, you see how they're wicked? They took us down for making money. They're jealous. I said, okay, just wait. And that whole thing in Austin blew the hell up. Now look, said, yeah, eh, 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 you was right. But we had to wait. Be patient. It's going to manifest itself. Everybody understand that? Sure you do. Sure you do. Um, Sirach 13, 15. Dislo Again, disloyalty breeds disloyalty. So don't think you're going to be disloyal and then get loyal brothers with you. No, no, no. There's an old expression on the streets. There's no honor among thieves. You ever heard that? So you're going to be to show yourself disloyal. Then you're going to get a group of brothers, and you honestly think they're going to be loyal to you. You're crazy. It's never going to happen. You see it in these gangster movies. You see it in mob movies all the time. But for some reason, we come in the truth, and we think, yeah, I can be the devil and be disloyal. I'm going to get a group of brothers with me, and they're going to be loyal to me. It don't work like that. Read that, Sirach 13, 15. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, verse 15. Every beast loveth his like. You see that? Every beast loveth his like. If you a thief, you like thief brothers. If you a whoremonger, you like whoremonger brothers. If you use a liar, you like lying brothers. I'll give an example. Oklahoma. All, we threw out about three or four brothers on the Sabbath. They at the, the strip club. Now I said to myself, how in the hell did three or four brothers manage all together to show up at the strip club together? Contingency talk. It's called, a deacon I thought calls it contingency talk. You know how you sit around, you be just talking. Uh, you remember that, ever, anybody ever see that strip club on such and such a place? The next brother go, yeah, yeah, I remember that thing. This brother go, what you, oh yeah, that strip club, yeah, that thing went bad, girl. Yeah, man, them girls is hot. Whoa! And this brother here, yeah, man. And then I go, let's go. Because he agreed, he would join in the conversation. He joined in. He joined into it. And then I said, hey, how about we go? So if, if anybody buck up, I could, I could easily say, I was just joking. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Contingency talk. But he liked it. He liked it. He liked it. Then I threw it out there. We all decided, let's go to the strip club. That's contingency. That's how it works. So... Liars love liars. Thieves love thieves. Whoremongers love whoremongers. Okay, read that again. Every beast loveth his like, and every man loveth his neighbor. All flesh consorteth according to kind. That's what I wanted. All flesh consorteth to whatever kind you is, you're going to consort. You're going to hook up with people like that. Bishop. You covetous? I need covetous brothers around me because I want to make that money. That's what that's how the money in Austin. That's how it was. If you wasn't covered just like that, you could not roll with Austin, okay? Everybody was make that money. Yeah. And I mean, they was making big. When I found, sat down and heard the numbers, I was like, y'all was making money like that? The hell is this? Bishop, you know, uh, I thought about, I remember uh, uh, Busy Lil always had a spirit of being lazy and self-willed. All the way from New York, I heard about his behavior. And when I heard he was moving to Texas, I'm like, ah. Oh. So anyways, he ended up one day I come to the school for the new moon and he in there with the uh you know cash uh 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 you know cash a lock you. He up in there. And I said to myself, how do these men meet each other? How y'all come up together? So is he come all the way from New York to meet him in Houston to to mesh and make a you know a business. When he was in New York, this is the spirit he had. He always found out who got money and get close to them. And he ended up moving to the house. He always, he always have that spirit, even in New York. <laughs> IUIC used to pay this brother rent every almost every month. Yeah, <laughs> that's how he always had that spirit. Hey, but he had, he could cook good, so he would butt everybody up with his food. He go, 
You be mad at him. He go, oh, I made this sandwich for you. And you be like, mm, that thing is good. <laughs> and you forget what you're mad at him about. <laughs> or he would do some art because he's, he's a great artist. I can't take that from him. I, we be ready to yell at him. Break, hey, you, get over here. Then he comes up. Oh, look at this art I did. And I go, oh, wow. Hey, come look at this. Hey, come, come, come. And we'll, yo, that thing, I hit it again. On the iPad. I say, yo, that thing is bad. On the iPad. On the iPad, right. Yeah. And then they would be mad. But I'd be leave him alone. Leave this brother alone. He all right. That dude turned up to be the devil. Yeah, he's the devil. <laughs> he's the devil. We always call, we always call into him. I mean, I, let's listen. The problem I had with him is, he always hold us hostage. We did a video. The brother, the brother give us the video next year. Yeah. We did one Passover, we ain't seen the Passover video until next year. Yeah. We're like, yo, what the hell's wrong with you? The whole year didn't do nothing. Now we got, for example, we got the men, the men conference. Before we even leave the men conference, the brother already got the video. Exactly. Exactly. You see how much I we placed that dude? Yeah. He used to hold us how much I said, okay, I'm going to do something with this dude. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the artwork. See how the Most High get down. The Most High has a sense of humor. Replace it with another brother who has the same name, the same name. Right, right, same name. That's irony right there. Where was we at? Let me know. Sirach chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 16. All flesh consorted according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. I'll give you another example. You ever notice, uh, uh, we'll tell a sister, for example, uh, she comes in, we'll say, join... Titus 2, Chad, uh, find a senior sister to counsel with. Sister goes, she looks around, and she'll go, she'll see another sister that came in with her. She's my counselor. I'm like, who's your counselor? Her. The sister that just came in with you yesterday? Yes. Are you retarded? How is she going to counsel you? She don't know no scriptures. You don't know no scriptures. But that's what they do, because they know the senior sister will check them and say, no, don't do this, don't do that. This is how you do it. A lot, some of them, these young ones don't want that thing. I see with brothers too. Brothers come in, they don't want to talk to the senior men. They want to talk to their peer. Remember what Jeroboam did, not Jeroboam, Rehoboam, Rehoboam. When the older men told him counsel, I don't know what I'm talking about because y'all don't read four chapters a day. Anyway, King Solomon's son, Rehoboam, didn't listen to the counselors that Solomon set up, his daddy. He said, I'm going to go to my peers. And his peers gave him wrong kid millennial council and cause the whole nation to split into two. That's what happens. That's what we see going on. So, did you finish that verse, Lemuel? Yes, sir. All right, so now, write this down also. I hope y'all been writing stuff down. Loyalty does not join or create factions. Lo I'm going to say it again. Loyalty does not join or create factions. An example, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The creation of factions attempted to rise up in the church of Corinth. I tell you, that was a rebellious congregation. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. You see that? That there be no divisions among you. Divisions is the beginning stages of creating factions. Go ahead. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. The spirit of Christ is a unifying spirit. The spirit of Christ is about being of one mind. When you get people that are opposed to what scriptures say and they want to do two different things, that's not of the Lord. Go ahead, watch. For it hath been declared unto me of you. Meaning my it has been told me. Somebody, a little birdie came by and told me what was going on. Read verse 11 again. For it, for it had been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. So the house of Chloe was an honorable family in the church of Corinth. They were reporting to Paul. Yes, that's right. They were snitching. They said, I'm going to tell what y'all are doing out here in Corinth. So whenever Paul was traveling... He got word of what was going on in the church. And you know they was pissed off at the house of Chloe. This is why we have the complaint forms. Let us know what's going on in the congregation. I'm going to give an example. Before you got here, that old deacon knucklehead that was used to be here. I come in, 
And uh, maybe some of the ones, senior ones may know what I'm talking about. Salute everybody. Most, all the sisters were here. I sit down, I'm talking with the brothers up here. A minute goes by, two minutes go by, and I just happen to look out the corner of my eye, and all of the sisters were still standing. So I said, I, I didn't know what was going on, so I continued talking, blah, 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 because we're not having class. We just talk, 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 talk. Two minutes go by, three minutes go by, five minutes. So I look again, they're still standing. I go, excuse me, excuse me. I said, sisters, why are y'all still standing? They said, we're not allowed to sit down until the last male comes into the school. I said, you're not allowed to sit down until the last male comes. I said, in the men's hang. I said, where'd you get that from? We don't teach that. They said, Deacon Knucklehead over there. I said, I said, bro, you making up your own rules? I said, that's called abuse. I said, look at these. You think these women are going to be standing for an hour to the last Negro walk up in here? That's called, what is it, putting, what did Christ say? You put burdens on the people. I said, don't do, don't do that, bro. Don't roll like that. And that was the beginning of the end for him. Because then I said, I got to keep my eye on this dude. This dude getting reckless out here. Okay, where we at? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead, read it again. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Contentions among you, meaning arguments. Watch this. Division, remember, divisions and contentions. Go ahead. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul. So some of the Corinthians said, listen, I'm a follower of Paul. Go ahead. And so I am of Paul. And I of Apollos. Another group of them was saying, well, I, I love Apollos better. I like the way Apollos teaches. I follow him. Go ahead. And I of Cephas. And another group said, I'm of Cephas, meaning Peter. I follow Peter. So that look at it. I want you to look at that. You had a group following Paul, a group following Apollos, and a group following Cephas. Go ahead. And I of Christ. And another group said, listen, I don't follow no man. I only follow Christ. Hmm. So that is, how many factions is that? You got one two, three, four groups in this one church. Watch, go ahead. Is Christ divided? Right. The spirit of Christ is not a spirit of division. Understand that. If the black and brown man can understand that, we'll be a little bit better off. Christ is not about division. That's what Paul said. Is Christ divided? Go ahead. Was Paul crucified for you? He says, was I crucified for you? Go ahead. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Go ahead. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Christmas and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. So the point of this, Paul was trying to put them all in that one-mindedness again because they were all divided. So I'll give an example. Amongst the bishop, the deacons, everybody has a favorite tea. And I hit it again. I don't know why I keep hitting this thing. And there's nothing wrong. You, have, you will have teachers that you favor over others. But they took it another level. They were like, no, I'm not listening to nothing Cephas says or who else was there? Or Apollos. They said, we, this one group said, I only listen to Paul. That was, that's, that's why Paul was said, they're all in the same spirit. And when you read down, where is it at? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where it says Apollos watered, I, where's the planet, where's that at? Somebody help me. 1 Corinthians, yes, yes. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. Uh, start at verse 3, and we're going to go down. Watch. This is continuing from chapter 1. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. For ye are, ye, for ye are yet carnal. Start at 2. Verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. He said, I've given you milk. He said, I want to give you meat, but you're not able to deal with the heavier things in the scriptures. Because you're carnal, you're wicked, you got, you got the devil on you. Go ahead. For while one saith, excuse me, for ye are yet carnal, for, as, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions. See, there's that word divisions again. Are ye not carnal Aren't and walk? Aren't you in the midst of sin and walk what? As men. And walk as men. Go ahead. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Say, aren't you carnal? Aren't you wicked for saying that? Causing divisions among the body? Go ahead. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Go ahead. But ministers by whom ye believed, 
even as the Lord gave to every man. You see that? He said, we're all ministers of the Lord, that the Lord's given that spirit to every man. Go ahead. I have planted. I planted. Apollos water. Meaning what? Paul started the church in Corinth. Apollos followed behind Paul and continued and, and answered questions, things of that nature. Okay, understand this. Like, for example, we, we went to Nigeria. We just planted the seeds there. But guess what? As brothers, we're going to send men out to water what we've already started there. That's how this gospel grows. And that's what Paul was explaining here. Go ahead. I have planted. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. God gives the increase. He's the one that increases the spiritual understanding in men's and women's minds. Go ahead. So then neither is he that planteth anything. The brother that goes out and plants is nothing. Go ahead. Neither he that watereth. Neither the brother that goes behind to answer questions and, and, and exhort them is nothing. Go ahead. But God that giveth the increase. But God is to be praised. He's the one that gives the increase. Go ahead. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. You see that? Paul's bringing them back to common sense now. That oneness of mind, that unifying spirit, bringing them back to Christ. He that plants and he that watereth are one. Go ahead. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. And everyone's going to receive their own reward according to their own labor. Now, what I want you to see that and look in comparison, go back to Acts 20 again. So notice how Paul was uniting everyone. But he warned us about, what was it verse 23 we read earlier? Verse 30. Verse 30, let me hear it. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. So there's a stark difference between Paul and, and what Paul was warning us about. The spirit of Christ unifies, the spirit of Satan divides. Understand that, okay? What, that was Acts 20. Okay. All right. Watch this. Give me 1 John 2.19. Again, loyalty does not join or create factions. Two nineteen. First John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that they were not all of us. See, that, that goes back to what we just read in Acts 20, verse 30. What, that's what we read, right? Read that again. Acts chapter 20, verse 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Now go back to 1 John 2, 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest, that they were not all of us. And that is history in the making. And it's not a one-time thing because Acts 20 verse 30 was prophetic even for these days. So don't think you read things and, oh, that only happened back then. Oh, no, no, no. He was warning us that even in these last days is going to happen. An example of that, another example is 1 Timothy, I think it's 4 and 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... When? In the latter times... Go ahead. Some shall depart from the faith. See that? Some shall depart from the faith. Go ahead. Giving heed to seducing spirits. You don't got to keep the Sabbath day no more. You ain't got to wear fringes no more. You can love the white man. He's your people. Love him. Thou shalt not abhor Edomite, my brother. You don't got to eat lamb. You can eat chicken and collard greens on Passover. This is what he's talking about. Go ahead. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So we'll read these things. And as though as it's, although it says in the latter times, we think it's talking about back then. No, it's talking about these days today, right now. Men and women come in as truth. They get offended. They got that disloyal spirit. Then they bounce and they do what we just read here. Look at number 16. Deacon Malachi was talking about this all night. Number 16, one down. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Azar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly. Notice it, 250 princes, not 
regular men. They were princes in Israel, meaning what? Captains. They were high-ranking officers. That's what it means by princes. Go ahead. Famous in the congregation. And these men were famous in the congregation. Go ahead. Men of renown. Everybody knew their name. Go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. You see that? They gathered themselves against, against, against Moses and against Aaron. Go ahead. And said unto them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Seeing everybody in Israel is holy. Go ahead. Every one of them. Every one of them. Go ahead. And the Lord is among them. And the Lord is among them. Go ahead. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? Why do you set yourselves up as leaders? So what are they saying? They were saying we're all the same. Remember how we started the class? Where John said Christ is preferred before me. That's the truth. Here during the time of Moses, they said we're all holy. We're all equal in the sight of the Lord. When you read down this whole thing, God said, no, you're not all equal. And God killed those 250 princes. Why? Because they, and, and, and it's a smokescreen. When people say we're all the same, we're all equal, like that's what Weasel Lil said. Weasel Lil said we're all the same. So you got to ask the question, then who's teaching class there? Somebody got to be the teacher. Somebody has to be the student. Unless all of y'all are teaching at the same time. No, that's game. That's called I got game. What are you going to say? So whenever you see videos of people saying there should be no rank, that's the same thing. Bible's always about rank and order. Always. Uh, hey, give me that in Titus 1. Titus 1. You know what's so crazy, Bishop? Some of these brothers was in the military. Yes. That, that was a shock to me. Some of these brothers that's teaching this was in the military. Mm -hmm. And it's some military. Is everybody the same? It's like the, it's like the congressman or the senator was up saying, oh, we, me and we in the prison is the same. No, that's why they call him president. That's why they call you a senator. That's why they call you a congressman. That's why they call you a governor, a mayor, a police officer. They are not the same. If there's the same, if all of them is the same, where's the order? There is no order. Exactly. Read that Titus 1 and 5. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Listen closely. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city. As I, as I had appointed thee. You know what that word elders translates to? Soldiers, officers, captains. They're just using different words here in the Greek from the Old Testament, which was written more so in Hebrew. Okay? In the Old Testament, you had captains, officers, soldiers, so forth and so on. The New Testament, they use the one word, elders, to cover bishops, deacons, whether or captains, officers, soldiers. They use that word, elders. There's a always been, it's all, through the whole Bible, there's rank, there's order, okay? But black and brown people, I don't know what's wrong with us. We get, whoo, no, well, everybody's the same, everybody's the same. Mm -mm. So how come when you go to school, when you went to school, you didn't tell a teacher, you can't teach me, we're all the same. <coughs> Nobody does that. We get crazy, we come in this truth, we lose our minds. Give me 2 Samuel 15, 11. Again. Loyalty does not join or create factions. 2 Samuel 15, verse 11. 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 11. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem. Mm. That so were, Absalom caused a rebellion against King David. How many men followed Absalom? And with Absalom went 200 men. 200 men, go ahead. Out of Jerusalem that were called and they went in their simplicity. They went where? In their simplicity. Meaning they were stupid as hell. These 200 men were simple as hell following Absalom to go against his father, King David. Was that it? That was the whole verse? And they knew not anything. That's why, I mean, they were stupid as hell. They didn't know nothing. They just like Absalom. And when you read about Absalom, it said he was good looking. They said Absalom was the best looking dude in all Israel. This dude had hair, flowy hair everywhere. Everybody loved Absalom. So when he said, follow me, they follow him. Remember, he was opposite. Remember Christ? Yes. They said Christ had no comeliness that we should follow him. They, people follow Christ only for the word's sake. Is that dude ugly as hell? But Absalom, when you read about it, said that dude was good looking. All the women loved that dude. Absalom, whoa, just throw the panties on the stage. 
That's how good looking this dude was. So they said these 200 men that followed him knew nothing. They were simple as hell. You know, you know what's so heavy? I want you guys to think about it. Meditate on it. You, are, you think Absalom, it take Absalom a month to train these 200 men? You think it take him two months? No. He was working on them for years. Think, think about it. Two, you think 200 men just, he just turn them in, in a week? On a month? It doesn't work like that. You know he was working on them because that's it. After, 40 years. Yeah, he had 40 years to work on them. He was sitting right there. Same thing today we see. Same thing today. It take years. That whole group that left was the same thing. You had a brother from this state working on him, brothers. Some of those brothers were employed with him, right, or his money scheme. It was the same thing. And then it said, it says, they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. It was dumb as hell. At that meeting that the deacons was at, remember, they were stumbling over Matthew 18? They didn't know what the hell Matthew 18 was talking about. That's why the scriptures say, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in a ditch. That's New Testament. It's saying the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. So, on this, write this down. The root of disloyalty is pride. The root of disloyalty is pride. Give me that in Sirach 10 and 12. We're almost done. Sirach 10, Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verse 12, to explain pride. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God, mm. and his heart is turned away from his maker. Read. For pride is the beginning of sin. See, that's what pride is, the beginning of sin. You got that spirit of pride on you? The way the Bible uses pride is not the way we use it in modern-day society. We use the word pride to mean you are confident in yourself, but that's not how the Bible uses it. The Bible uses the word pride in the negative sense. Okay, meaning what? You're breaking God's commandments. Read that again. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. What kind of abomination will he pour out? The four stages of disloyalty. They're going to pour out what? He's going to pour out the self-willed stage. going to begin there, followed by what? What's the next? The offended stage, then the passive stage, then that overly criticism stage. Okay, and it all starts with pride. I don't want to keep these commandments. Okay, I don't want to do it. From there, give me, go to the book of Matthew. Go to the book of Matthew. When you examine the brother or sister that's disloyal, you'll notice certain things in them. You'll notice slick talk response. Like if you're talking to them, they talk, that's the term, right? Slick talk smart mouth or they may ignore you when you're speaking to them they may mock those who are over them these are just little signs you got to be keen or aware of okay and they have a constant mind to criticize all right uh there's another expression write this down write this down familiarity f-a-m-i-l-i-a-r-i-t-y familiarity breeds contempt Familiarity breeds contempt. And what that means is that those close to you have no respect for you. Familiarity, one word, is familiar. Just remember that. Because I know it goes, that arity at the end. Like, what is that? It's hard to even pronounce. Just use the word familiar. Those who are familiar to you breeds contempt. I'm going to give you some scriptural examples of that. Look at Matthew 13, verse 55 with Christ. Matthew 13, 55. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? Let's pause there. What I want you to notice is that the people here were familiar with Christ. They watched him grow up. That's why they says here in 55, is not this the, the carpenter's, ain't that Joseph's boy? We know him. It says, isn't his mother called Mary? Okay. And his brothers, we know his brothers too. James and Joseph, Simon, he got four brothers. We know the whole family. And he got sisters too. Are they not all with us? Whence then have this man all these, where did he get this wisdom from? Because we knew this dude since he was a little youngin'. 
Read on. Watch what it says. And they were offended in him. Why were they offended in him? Because they knew they had they had no respect for him because they knew him from a child. Watch, it's gonna say it as we go as we read on. Go ahead. But Jesus said unto them, Listen good. A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. See what Christ is saying there? Meaning a prophet, you got honor. But in your own country and in your house where people know you, you're gonna have no honor. You try to bring the truth back to your mom or your father, I tell from experience. Boy, you can't tell me nothing in front to me. You came out of my behind. I didn't come out of yours. That's what I hear. Okay? My cousins laugh. Oh, man, that old nigga, shut the hell up. You did this. You used to smoke weed. I remember you did this thing over here. It went hit nothing for me. So I, okay. I hit, and you hear the story all around Israel. It's a, when I hear families coming, that's a blessing because that's so rare. So, so rare. You better try to cherish and honor that thing. Most of the time, though, like Christ said, a prophet is not without honor, save in it, meaning except in his own country and in his own house. Read the next verse. And he did not many, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because nobody believed in him. Because they knew him from a child, a little boy growing up. He was a snot-nosed kid. We know you. So that's, that's an example of familiarity breeds contempt. Now look at Numbers 12, 1 to 4, another example. With Miriam, Moses, and Aaron. Remember, Miriam was the oldest out of all of them. Out of them three. It was Miriam was the oldest, followed by Aaron. Moses was the baby. Moses was 80. Miriam was about, uh, was mm, I want to say 90-something. Okay? And, and, she, and Aaron was in the middle. But Moses was the youngest one. So look at Numbers 12. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Now, I might have the ages mixed up, so don't uh, quote me on them ages. Okay? But I know Moses was 80, and I know they were older than him. Go ahead. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Go ahead. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. The Lord was mad at that thing. Why did Miriam, notice in the order it says Miriam and Aaron, because Miriam led the charge. She said, you my younger brother, I'm going to tell you, because God's dealing with us too. Nooka, you married that hoe over there in Ethiopia, you used to be married to her. And the Lord got pissed off at that thing. And he, when you read down, the Lord says, why weren't you afraid to speak against Moses? He said, I allowed that thing to go down. When, when y'all start reading four chapters a day, you'll read the whole chapter. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. Another example of familiarity breeds contempt, meaning those familiar with you will not have respect for you. I knew you when you was locked up. Yeah, that's right. I remember you used to sling hash on the street. You was a hallmonger. You got that girl over there pregnant and that girl too, and you ain't take care of none of them babies. And you would have told me about the Bible. Nigga, get, get out of here. That's Familiarity breeds contempt. That's why you got to go to another city where nobody knows your name. <laughs> Read that. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 4. No, 17, verse 28. Uh, excuse me. Verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto this, the wait, wait, Let me set it up for you. Since y'all don't read the four chapters, I'm going to set it up for you. Goliath is in the valley challenging the Israelites. And Israel was scared as hell because Goliath of Gath how tall was that dude? Like 15 feet? 13? 13? Whatever it is. Huge! Everybody's scared of that Hamite. Everybody's scared to death of this dude. So here comes David. He's a young boy, possibly in his teenage years. He comes up to bring his brother's food. Now, verse 28, read that. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Watch and what he, he says. And he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride. I know your pride. Go ahead. And the naughtiness of thine heart. And the naughtiness of your heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. You see that? Familiarity breeds contempt. His brother Eliab knew David. He said, you're a nosy kid. You're always in our business. You came here for no good. You came out to run your mouth and talk ish. I know you, David. Y'all see that? That's familiarity breeds contempt. They knew the character of David. 
Okay, but th what they didn't know is that David got anointed by Samuel. Okay, they didn't know that thing. Look at Matthew 10, 36. Watch this. Y'all going to relate to this one. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. See, see what Christ said? Your enemies is going to be them of your own house. And guess what? That starts with your spouse, male and female. Starts with your spouse. Why? Because your spouse knows you. I'm going to give you some example. Brother comes in and says, my wife is the devil. I'm going, I need to leave her and get me a new wife because she don't want to follow. Really, brother? You sure that's right? Yeah, that's right. Let, do me a favor. Bring your wife. Uh, wife comes up. He's bringing up complaints against her. She's quiet. She's sitting there. Brother, you finished? He goes, yeah, I'm finished. Go ahead, sister. Is that true what he said? She said, she said yeah, all of that is true, but I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you what's going on. The niggas still smoke weed in the house. He be bringing bitches by the house. He didn't tell you that, did he? I said, bro, you doing that? Uh, 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 uh. It, 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 it ain't about me. No, no, bro. You was just saying she's wicked and she don't want to do the commandments. She's explaining she ain't doing the commandments because of your bad example in the house. So you need to be patient. Now sit you behind down. And that's what we see. We've seen that many, many a time. Brothers, and we've seen sisters do it too. Remember the sister that wanted another husband? She started talking to another brother of the school. She said, oh, oh, my husband don't want to keep the commandments. So I, I need me another. I said, hold on. Where's your husband? He ain't here. He don't want to come. I said, do me a favor. Bring him next week. He comes next week. Uh, so what's going on with, you know, your wife is saying that you got problems in the house. He says, no, no, no. She says, we have no problems, and I do want to keep the commandments. She got a whole spirit. He said, she's always had a whole spirit. She said, from when we met, she always liked to bounce around, but I told you, well, you're going to marry me. We got to settle down. Says so, sis, you understand what he's saying? You got you can't you can't bring your horrorish ways into this truth. And she tried to just weasel around. And he was saying he wasn't coming to the school because of her actions at home. She'd still be text messaging the thing. So she, we said, sis, can you check that spirit? Said, all right, give us some time. Don't be quick. Have you laid with anybody? No, she hasn't. Okay, fine. Y'all work this thing out. We'll bring this up again a couple of months from now. So read the verse again. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Though those in your own house know you. A lot of us, maybe some of y'all married in the truth. Most of us did not. We married in, in the world, okay? Me and my wife used to hang out. We used to go to hunt our girlfriends. We all hang out together. And say, hey, that's, anybody ever been to 42nd Street in New York? Before they fixed it. You been, have you been there? When it was nasty. Pimps, holes everywhere. We that was the hangout spot. Strip club. We get and you, we were squeezing this booth and have the strippers going. Wait a minute. <laughs> anyway, that's for another story. But you can't be quick to leave real cause she know you and you know her. So y'all gotta work. Try to work this thing out. So all praise. We got our minds right. We got our minds right. We ain't doing X, Y, Z no more. Or praise to the Lord. But that's what Christ was saying. Read it again, read it again, read it again. And yeah, a man, I start digressing. Y'all got to bring me back on track. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Man's foes shall be they of his own household. So that goes for your spouse and your children. Some of y'all got grown children. And your grown children don't want to hear the truth because they know you. Daddy, you done stepped out on Ma so many times. Come on. Come on, man. That's Bible SH. I don't want to hear this. You were disrespectful to my mother. You did this. You did A, B, and C. I know you, man. Like, uh, you know, I always think about <coughs> there's a movie called, um, what's the name of this movie? There's Fences. I love that movie, Fences, with Denzel Washington. But there's another one. Um, let me get my mind right. Tag. Uh, anyway, I'll talk about Fences. Anybody saw Fences with Denzel? Good movie, good movie, good talking points. Where the oldest son hated his father. The father was very hard on him and was very disrespectful to him and mainly the mother. And he stepped out on mom, got an, another woman pregnant, and that enraged the son. And the son had no respect for dad. And you'll see that time and time again, okay? There's another movie I'm thinking about. I can't think of the movie. Hey, hey, just talk. Say something. Let me get my thought on this movie. Go ahead, say something. Somebody talk. Lava talk. I was going to say it, uh, 
In other words, what Bishop is saying right now, take it to heart. Uh, you know how we was talking about uh, the mustard seed. Paul said, I planted a pot of water that gives the increase. Uh, hey, officer, is this your guy's second school or third school? A fifth school. That's big. You know why it's big? Some of you might think when you go out every Saturday, you're passing flyers, you think it's not making an effect. Oh, yes, it does. How do you know? That's your fifth school. If it didn't make an effect, right, you could have been at your first school. So that saying, when you're passing those flowers, when you're teaching, the seed you planted, keep in mind, remember, the, remember I give you an example about how if you put a seed down, the seed don't go in one day, right? Because I remember, for example, Atlanta. I remember your guys teaching Atlanta years ago, before, before Atlanta years ago, uh, uh, he wasn't even with uh, you, uh, IUSC wasn't even start yet I saw a video old video your guys wasn't we went out to yeah. it twice once when we were with uh, a school called 12 Tribes oh that was a terrible school I hated that school then when we became IUIC, I think four of us went out there yeah went out there and then later on uh, the, the Deacon I was in Shakia and Deacon Aitan we went over there but the seed was planted because by the time I moved over there there was only a couple of brothers over there the point is, the seed is there. When you're teaching, you see the word come out. The seed is there. It might not be time for that. Remember, the scripture said, time and chance give to every man. All of us are not going to call at the same time. But that doesn't mean the seed is not there. Some of you, you heard this truth like probably like 10 years ago. Why are you only coming now? Because it wasn't time for you yet. That's why Paul said, I, I planted a part of water, God give the increase. So now, Bishop just went to Nigeria. They're planting their seed. They're planting their seed. Somebody else is going to come and, and water it. And God give them the increase. Ten years from now, those African countries might have like some of the biggest school. Remember, those are, there's just like a lot of jerks over there. You never know. And you might be like, damn. But people, uh, there's an old say, in Haiti, that people always want to come when the food I will prepare. Nobody want to help prepare the damn food. And they always question, oh, the food tastes good. Well, brother, guess what? Somebody had to go in the damn kitchen and prepare it. He didn't just prepare itself. So we all got to put our hand and prepare that food. So when it's time to eat, everybody's like, damn. Because that's why Christ talk about producing foods. Some food will stand for 24 because some brothers just want to learn and just stay home. What is the purpose of your learning? You got to go out there and plant that seed. One flyer, you, 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 you won't believe what one flyer you pass, how much an effect that's going to make. Just one flyer. Yeah, I, got one. I had one flyer. When I was working at a print shop, a high school friend of mine came in for a print job. I said, hey, I ain't seen you in a long time. I said, what, what you printing? He gave me a flyer. It was a jacked up flyer. But I looked at it. It said, Christ is black with a scripture. Don't celebrate Christmas, Jeremiah. I said, hey, what is this about? Because at that time, I was into Kemet. I was following Kemet stuff. I said, what do you mean Christ is black? I said, Christ is white. He said, no, bro. He said, Christ is black. I said, show me. I didn't have a Bible. I said, show me that because I think there's a bunch of crap. So after work, he came by and he showed me. And I asked him to come by my job every day for five days. Then I said, I, you got to teach me more. He said, no, you got to go to the school. So that's when I went to the school and I brought my wife. She was rebellious as hell. But she came and we sat down and we learned. I was poof, one over one fly. One fly. Now look. I hit it again. Look at uh, last scripture. Look at Jeremiah chapter 20. Cause I can't remember the movie either. Jeremiah 20. And if y'all get a chance, look at the movie Queen and Slim. Y'all saw that? How many saw it? Raise your hand. But y'all don't read four chapters a day. You see that, Isaac? You see this? Now, the movie Queen and Slim, we got a good, it's a, I think couples should see that. It's good talking points in it. I, I really, I like that movie. Jeremiah 20, what are we talking about? We're talking about familiarity breeds contempt, meaning those familiar with you lose respect for you or have no respect for you. Watch this. Uh, Jeremiah 20, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 10. 
For I heard the defaming of many. I heard the defaming of many. That's slandering, name calling. Go ahead. Fear on every side. Fear on every side. We hate IUIC. I can't stand you, nigga. Go ahead. Report, say they, and we were reported. Watch this. All my familiars, watch for my halting. All those familiar with me, watch for me to fall. That's what Jeremiah is saying. And this is what you're going to see. And this truth, everybody that's familiar with you, that knew you from years and years, they're waiting for you to fall. Because they don't believe. They said, no, 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 no. I know him. He ain't right. Just watch. He's going to fall. He's going to give up that crap, that Bible crap soon. That's what he's saying. All my familiars, watch for my halting. Go ahead. Saying, peradventure, he will be enticed. Watched. He's going to be enticed. He used to be a thief. Situation's going to come out. He's going to need some money. He's going to steal again. Just watch. Go ahead. And we, oh, he smoked weed. He gonna be enticed. Go ahead. And we shall. He used to smoke crack. He gonna be enticed. Go ahead. And we shall prevail against him. See that? And we shall prevail against him. Then we gonna mock him. Go ahead. And we shall take our revenge on him. And we gonna cuss him out. So Jeremiah went through the same thing we were going through. The same exact thing. So I pray that y'all understand the four stages of disloyalty. Again, self-willed was the stage one, followed by the offended stage was stage two, followed by the passive stage was stage three, followed by the criticism stage was stage four. Loyalty breeds loyalty and disloyalty breeds disloyalty. Always remember that, brothers. Always remember that, sisters. All praise. Can I get an amen up in here? All praises. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.